This is Unit 7 Notes, Water Cycle and Climate. I left off with Aquifer. And Aquifer is an underground zone of porous material that contains useful quantities of groundwater. So in that first sentence there, keyword we've got is porous material. If I have a porous material, that means that I can pour water on it and the water will pass through it. So we need some sort of soil that water is passing through and then it kind of collects over time. So an aquifer, I would say, is kind of just like a fancier word used to describe groundwater and where if you had a well, you had to drill down into the zone of saturation and retrieve that water. They call them aquifers. Agriculture in Western United States depends heavily on aquifers in order to supply water for their plants. So in, the, in Western United States, it's a lot drier there. They have a drier climate, which means that they take water out of the ground in order to put on the crops so that they can actually grow them. If an aquifer is depleted, um, then it needs to rain in order for the water to fill back up again. Um, sometimes it cannot be replenished as fast as it's being used and then you can drain out the aquifer and essentially the ground dries up and there's no longer any water for us to use. Some factors that are going to affect infiltration. Okay, that word infiltration means that water is filtering into the soil. The first one we have is porosity. Porosity sounds like pores. You have pores in your skin. They're like small little holes. So this is the percentage of open space, pores and cracks that are in a material compared to its total volume. Basically the amount of air space that is represented in your soil. If I have a greater porosity, then I'm gonna have a greater infiltration rate. Meaning that if I had gravel, Gravel has a lot of air spaces within it. Okay, when I pour water onto gravel, the water goes straight through it. Whereas clay, very tiny particles, they're tightly packed together. There's not a lot of air space, and therefore when I put water on clay, it either doesn't pass through it or it takes a lot of time for the water to go through it. So always, uh, this will allow water to flow through the soil and be stored. So we can conclude that water, the soil is porous, it does have air in it, which allows the water to flow through it. Shape. That's my first factor that can affect my porosity. If I have well-rounded particles, they're going to have a greater porosity than angular ones because of the way that they fit together. So check out this picture here. If I have round particles, if I put two round things together, they're not gonna fit. And therefore there's always gonna be a gap. These gaps, that's the pore space. So if I pour water on here, the water can go straight through it. So this has a higher porosity than this over here. The angular pieces are kind of sharp and pointy and they fit together a little bit better there's less air space, so when I pour water on it, the water will take longer to pass through it. This has less of a porosity. Packing. More closely packed together the particles are, the lower that the porosity is. So here, very loosely packed. If I pour water on this, water goes straight through it. Over here, closely packed, there is less space, so the water will take longer to go through here. Higher porosity, lower porosity. Sorting. I'm going to just skip to the pictures. If I have particles that are sorted, it means that they are all the same size. So here, got all the same size and shape particle. They line up perfectly. If I pour water on this, water goes straight through it. Whereas over here, unsorted, I have big and small particles all mixed together. And when I dump water on here, the water can't really pass through it. This has a high porosity, this has a low porosity. Mineral cement. If I have like a, a sandstone rock, I have sand-sized particles and they're held together with a cement. 
that eliminates any of the airspace between my sand grains and therefore I'm going to have a lower porosity. So mineral cement will reduce the porosity of my rock. Now this is a question that comes up a lot on the regions and it's a trick question so you know this is something that you definitely want to pay attention to. Particle size does not affect the porosity. So I have this example here. If I have three beakers that are the same exact size and they are filled with the same shape particle. So each one of these has round size particles. Okay, if I fill them up to the same exact amount, then each one of these beakers is going to have the same porosity. So 48% for all three of these. What that means is that this might look like it has less airspace, but if I was to add up all the tiny little air gaps, they would equal the same amount as the airspace over here. Like maybe four of those little air pockets equals one of these tiny air pockets. So porosity is the same, okay? Trick question. Because they usually will have you look at these and be like, which one has the highest porosity? And then people are like, oh, this one, because it looks bigger. No, they all have the same porosity. Then we've got permeability. Okay, so there's two P words that come up a lot here. We've got porosity, we've got permeability. Permeability is the ability for water to pass through something. Okay, so how kind of quickly that the water kind of goes down. The more permeable that your soil is, the faster and easier that the water will pass through. Permeability rate, speed at which water flows through something. Okay, so factors that will affect your permeability. Now, these essentially are the same exact factors that I talked about with porosity. The shape, the sorting, and the packing. And they're all, they all correlate together. If I have rounder particles, then I have a higher permeability because water can pass through it easier. Sorting. If my particles are sorted, water passes through it easier, more permeability. Loosely packed particles, higher permeability because water can pass through it easier. Some other ones though would be human and land use. Areas that are covered with pavement are not going to be permeable. When it rains on a sidewalk or a driveway, the water doesn't go through the pavement. It stays on top and becomes runoff. Some other things would be like farming, deforestation, which is cutting down trees, grazing of domesticated animals. That will reduce the amount of plant life, which will oft oftentimes make it less permeable. So domesticated animals, you want to think like, um, cows. You put cows in a field, they're going to eat up all of the grass and vegetation. And that vegetation is important because the grass slows the water down and allows it to flow into the ground. Whereas if I just have dirt every time that it rains, more runoff is going to happen. Grain size and surface area. Fine grain sediment, like your silt and your clay, is going to have more surface area, making it harder for the water to get through. So clay has a low permeability rate because water doesn't go through clay very easily. Permeability versus porosity. Um, here we've got Gore-Tex. Gore-Tex is kind of like an extensive type of material. You can get jackets, boots, sneakers that are made out of Gore-Tex. And if you like to go hiking or do anything kind of outside, this is something that's good to have. So they're designed to allow air to flow through so that the body can remove sweat, but at the same time you're not getting wet. So I have like a rain jacket that's made out of Gore-Tex. If I go outside when it's raining, if I'm working out, if I'm hiking, then I'm, I'm just going to be sweating underneath that jacket and I want it to be breathable so the air can pass through my jacket but my water molecules cannot, which means that an air molecule is smaller than a water molecule. So the holes of the fabric are just small enough to let the air pass through it but not the water. Another important factor is capillarity or capillary action. 
This is the process by which water is drawn into the openings due to the attractive force between water molecules and the surrounding earth materials. Basically what that means is that plants are going to use this capillarity. If I have a plant, the roots are going to extend down into the soil, and every time that it rains, those roots have to suck the water up and then draw the water up through the plant so that it can reach the leaves. So capillarity causes water to move up against the water table and then make its way through the zone of aeration. Capillary action also allows like trees and stuff like that to go about their daily life functions. So an example would be, and you could even like do this at home, if you have a paper towel or a napkin and a glass of water, if you dip the paper towel into the water, it's going to be difficult for you guys to see it, but when you dip just the corner in, the water travels up through the napkin. So on here, even though I put that little, just the, the tip part in the water, the water made its way all the way up to here. So the same thing's happening in the ground. Naturally, water can go up through the soil. Now, there's going to be a specific particle size that works best for capillary action, and that's small. So here in this graph, the smaller the particles, the better the capillary action. And that's because if I have small particles, my water droplet size between each particle is going to be smaller, and that means it's lighter, and it's easier for it to go against gravity. So small particles, better capillary action. Vegetation. The more vegetation that you have, the higher the infiltration rate. If I had like a, a hill and the rain hits the hill, if there's grass on it, the grass will slow the water down, which will give it more time to infiltrate into the soil. So we want to have grasses and trees on the surface of the earth to help slow the water down and give it more time to go into the soil. Uh, slope. These are other factors that have to do with runoff. I'm just going to stick these all out here. So slope, I'm, and a lot of these I kind of review, steeper slope, you get more runoff because the, the water flows down the slope. Degree of saturation, if the ground is already saturated, then you're going to get more runoff because the ground is like a sponge and if it's completely full of water, you can't put any more into the ground and it becomes extra that flows over the surface. Porosity, the if pores are completely full of water, it's 100% saturated, you'll get more runoff. Temperature, if the ground is frozen, like in the winter time, then water is not going to be flowing to the ground. Um, also, usually in the winter time it snows, so you're going to also have you know, less runoff. Uh, human and land use, impermeable surfaces lead to increased runoff. So a parking lot is going to be an area with more runoff because the water can't go through the pavement. Okay, water budgets. Um, I'm going to skip through this part because it's not important for you to know right now. Stream discharge. If this word comes up, it basically is talking about the volume of water that is passing through the stream. In the springtime, we have a lot more rain, all the snow is melting, and therefore we have a greater stream discharge. If there is more discharge, typically the stream is also going to be flowing faster. During dry periods, in the summertime, the stream still continues to flow because the groundwater will flow into that running body of water. Okay, that brings us to climate. So I'm going to stop here for this segment.